Harry Carey back at Rigby Field as we go into the top of the second. The Pirates on the very first pitch of the ball game took a one to nothing lead as Carlos Garcia walloped his seventh homer of the year and it landed out on Waveland Avenue. Boy did he ever cream that one. First pitch to Dave Clark. Curveball. Inside ball one. Dave Clark. The pitch swung on. Ground ball is sharply hit. Nice play by Grace. And a toss to Mark Hawking for the out. Good play all the way around. Hawking getting over there in a hurry on a dead run catching the assist of Mark Grace. Now the farther you are away from first base the more difficult to throw and the harder you have to make the throw. Grace is well away from first. He has to make an overhand toss. He hits Harkey and Harkey hits the bag and the inside with the right foot. And that's what all pitchers try to do and they had Dave Clark by plenty. One away. And here's Al Martin. There's a drive way back, way back. Might be out of here. Yeah, it is. That's his second home run of the game for the Pirates. And that's a 10th home run of the year given up by Mike Harkey. Now the Pirates hadn't hit a home run in seven games coming into this one. And Jim Leland was talking about it before the game. And he was lamenting the fact that they had shown no power. Well, they've shown some power now as Mike Harkey gets a fastball out over the plate, outer half, and Al Martin hits his seventh, his 24th driven in, and the Pirates lead two to nothing. Well, I think it's quite obvious his fastball is not very fast. It seems to be like batting practice. Well, the speeds are down, Harry, from when he first came back. And Billy Connors was saying that he was somewhat concerned about that. And Harry, if you're not throwing overpowering fastballs, then you really have to hit your spots. And we've talked about Mike Harkey before, catching too much of the plate with the fastball. Here's a strike call to Don Slot. Who has hit seven homers, driven in 40 runs, batting 303. Smash down the first baseline foul. Al Martin had had a home run previously against Cub pitching, but he was hitting only three out of 18, which is a 167 average. Now, how about that? Ground line drive up the middle. Sandberg over the first two guard. Cub fans join the Cubs for the Kemper Financial Youth Clinic on Thursday, August 5th. The first 5,000 youngsters, 13 and under, attending the Cubs Pirates game will be allowed on the field for a pregame youth clinic sponsored by Kemper Financial. The gates open at 11:20, with the clinic scheduled to begin at 11:40. So don't miss your chance to get instruction from the Cubs players and coaches. Two out, two to nothing, Pirates. Al Martin had been hitting with only three out of 18. One of the three had been a home run, batting only 167. He hit the homer this inning. In the first inning, Carlos Garcia leading off had only four out of 22 against the Cubs for a 182 batting average. He hit a home run. Swung and he fouled it back. Scott Bullitt. Hitting 227. Playing against the Cubs for the first time. He's 0 for no homers, two RBIs. There's a high fly ball. Here comes Sammy. There goes Derek, and Derek makes the catch. Derek May pulled down Bullets high fly ball. One run, one hit. At the end of an inning and a half. Can this father. She loves him. She marries him. Give away this bride. And still keep his sanity. Oh my 
Will this man... A wonderful young man, wonderful. ...marry this woman... At least my mother's not thinking of coming with us on our honeymoon. ...and live to tell about it? The wedding is not the land of the living dead. For the first time on television... This is a family of lunatics. Alan Alda, Joe Pesci, Ali Sheedy, Molly Ringwald. You're invited to Betsy's Wedding. Wednesday night at 7 on Channel 9. I just want a house where I can raise my kids. Just a really nice place for everyone to gather and have good times. A place you can grow in. Yeah. And every time I open up that door, say, wow, I'm home. When it's this hot, don't take chances. Only Armor All Protectant guarantees your new car's dash from cracking. There is a fountain of youth, and we guarantee it. Armor All. Steve Stone. We go in the bottom in second with Steve Bouchelle leading it off. Well, I don't know about politics. Senator George P. Shattuck. Senator of the 46th District, Peoria. As named as his administrative assistant, Harold A. Pete Von Aachen. Boy, oh boy. Talk about the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> Pete's here with us in the booth. Now the pits. A little bit outside. Is there any nepotism involved in that? <laughs> Pete's daughter's married to Senator George Shadid's son. Here's a high pop foul out of play. Steve Bouchelle has a very sore left elbow. Oral Hershiser hit him in the elbow, and unfortunately for Steve, it got a lot more of the bone than it did the meat. And Steve said he's been hit a lot, but right now he's feeling pretty uncomfortable, but not enough to not be in the lineup. One ball, one strike. A little bit inside. Oh, you see where Bill Swift of the Giants for the month of July won five, lost one, earn run average 2.08. And how about Rod Beck, Harry? 24 consecutive saves yeah. as a short reliever out of the bullpen. What a year he's having. There's a drive by Bouchelle way back in the left center, way back near the fence, going to be caught. And it is. Scott Bullitt ran over to near the Ivy, past the 368 foot mark. One out. Just a little bit of wind that's blowing across to the right field corner held this one in the ballpark as Bouchelle, making a bid for his ninth home run of the year, comes up a couple of feet short. And as ceremony before the game, they called out the Medieval Group, sponsored by Pepsi. And they, they honored Rick Wilkins. He is now called what, Sir Wilkins? Sir Rick. Sir Rick. One strike and nothing. One out. Here he is. A little bit inside. Wilkins hitting 295, one home run behind. Sammy Souza, who follows him in the batting order. One ball, one strike. Swung and he missed. A 
Wilkins had two out of four yesterday. No, I take that back. One out of four. The pitch. Swap him out swinging on a curveball. Off speed. Two out. And a big hand for Sammy Sosa. Hey, you see Jimmy Leland? Next to him, Milt May, former catcher. Two out, nobody on. Sammy, who hit his 21st, had two out of four yesterday. The three RBI. Jimmy Leland's a great example of what we've been saying all along. You can be a great manager, and many acclaim Jim Leland the best in the business. But if you don't have the horses, you're not going to win. Even the best manager, if he can't put real good players on the field every day, he's going to finish up the track. I think even a better example than Jimmy Leland would be Tony La Russa. How, do you, how, how in the world can you explain the A's being in last place? 0 oh and 2. Boy, the horses are what you have to have. There's a pitch a little bit high. One ball, two strikes. Let's see if Don Slott goes to the little slider that Wagner's been throwing. It's a tight, quick breaking ball that dives away from the right-hand hitters. And usually, that's where they'll go to get Sammy Sosa. Paul Wagner. Inside. Two balls, two strikes. Everybody else that schedules playing tonight. This is the only major league game this afternoon. Two balls, two strikes. Hey, the rooftops is still well populated. Line drive base hit. The first Cub hit. A single by Sosa. And here is Kevin Roberson. Now there's an example of a time when a pitcher wanted to throw the slider low and away. Don Slott was setting up low and away. But when you hang any kind of breaking ball, it's not hard for the hitter to hit. And watch where Slott is. He wants the slider low and away and look at the pitch. It hangs the inner portion of the plate and Sammy Sosa drives it into left field. You know, you're talking about the horses, Steve. What a horse Barry Bonds is for the Giants. And what a horse Fred McGriff has become for Atlanta. There goes a runner. Swung and he fouled it off. Sammy had that Boy, face stolen sure easily. Did. And Wagner didn't pay any attention to him. And you would think that Paul Wagner would have taken a look at the sheet and noticed that Sammy Sosa was really the only consistent base runner the Cubs have because he just took one look. Sammy was off to the races. Would have stolen it easily. Atlanta's won nine out of the last ten. They're still seven and a half behind the Giants. There he goes again. Swung and missed the throw. In there, a stolen base. Number 18 for Sosa, who's been gunned down only five times. And that wasn't Don Slott's fault. Paul Wagner once again chose not to go to first base. And Sammy had a big lead, a great jump, and he's in well before the tag. Watch it again. No chance for Don Slott as Sosa really running the base as well. In fact, he's doing everything well right now. Romerson is 0 for his last 10. So he's about due. 0 and 2. Inside a slider. Barry Bonds leads the league and extra base hits with 60. In slugging percentage, number one. And on base percentage, number two, John Crook leads. 
Now the pitch. There's a drive and safe. There it is. Fair ball. Into the corner. A run is scored. And Roberson has doubled the right. And the score now is two for Pittsburgh. One for the Cup. Here's a fastball out over the plate, and this is how young pitchers lose baseball games. You've got first base open. You got a right hand hitting pitcher due up next, and he's well ahead of Roberson and throws one out over the plate, and Kevin ropes it into right field for RBI number 12 and his first double of the year. That group that uh, knighted Rick Wilkins is the medieval times. Harkey, a pretty good hitting pitcher, fouls off the first delivery. Two to one, the Cubs now only one back. Harkey has had four hits, four out of 31. There you saw Roberson, Sammy Sosa in the dugout, Roberson, at second. One ball, one strike. Noah Martin from Springfield, Illinois, and Elizabeth Stepanik from Wilmington are the celebrity bat boy and bat girl today. High pop foul. Two strikes and a ball. Wagner does have seven wild pitches this year, so occasionally he will throw that slider low in the dirt. It may not have 39,000, but I would guess it's got to be over 30 today. Stock him out. So. After two are out, two hits produce a run. One man left. At the end of two, the Pirates are out in front. Two to one. A participating advertiser in Cubs baseball is Montgomery Ward, where things are really changing. Hey, Chicago, make it a fun life. Bud Light. Give me three Bud Lights. Bud Light me. Garcon, Bud Light. Bud Light's for everyone. Bud Light tantalizes my taste buds. Hey, I was gonna say that. Hey, hey Chicago, this Bud Light's for you. Beautiful bands and Bud Light go together. Hey! Bud Light's here to stay. There's only one light in Chicago. Bud Light. Fantastic. Hey! What if a bean counter compared Ford Taurus with Buick LeSabre? First, LeSabre is a full-size six-passenger car, not a mid-size. One bean for LeSabre. LeSabre also has a bigger, more powerful engine and anti-lock brakes. Standard. Two more beans. Finally, LeSabre is now just $18,999, about $1,500 less than Taurus. And that's a lot of beans. The anniversary edition LeSabre. It beats the beans out of Taurus. See your better Buick dealer today. In this throwaway, disposable world, it's nice to find things that last. Relationships, neighborhoods, and the businesses in them. Like your neighborhood 76 station. For years, folks have relied on 76 for quality gasolines to help keep their engines clean and running smooth. Nothing lasts forever, but we think a long, long time would be nice. 76. Go with the spirit. Summer's here, and guess who's not getting a vacation? I came this close to going to Cancun, but no. Murphy Brown. <laughs> Tonight at 6 on Channel 9. Harry Carey back at Wrigley Field. Leading off will be Paul Wagner for the Pirates, their pitcher. The Aflac trivia question. Who was the winning pitcher in the first World Series night game? I am going to say Doc knows Steve Blass. Here's a one hopper. The, this guy, you know, throws him on one away. So I get a shot at it, huh? Well, I'll say Bruce Keeson. 
One man out. Carlos Garcia, who started the ball game with a home run. I'll bet you Mike won't throw a fastball <laughs> on the first pitch this time. Boy, he hit it a mile out onto Waveland Avenue. One out, nobody on. A breaking ball, low and away. Well, Harry, Willie Mays told me, and granted, Carlos Garcia is not Willie Mays, but he said if he hit a home run on a fastball, the next time up, he looked curveball the first pitch and tried to hit another one because he thought he wouldn't see another fastball. This time, the first pitch was a slider for Mike Harkey. <laughs> Two balls, no strikes. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure that out, do you, if you're a hitter? <laughs> if you hit a home run, if you're a pitcher, if you hit a home run on the fastball on the first pitch, you would think automatically you'd throw anything but a fastball on the first pitch. But pitchers think too much. They think, well, he won't think I'll throw him another <laughs> fastball, so I'll throw it. Here he walked him. Garcia walks with one out. First pass issued by Harkey. For all of you Dwight Smith fans, and I know there's a lot of you out there, Last night at Daytona in a ball on his rehab assignment he had two doubles and three at bats he's now five for eleven with one run batted in so apparently the thumb is OK and Dwight Smith is hitting the ball very well as you would expect he would in class A. Well if you want to talk about the minor league teams how about the Carl Rhodes acquired in the Paul Asamaka deal in his first game two days ago he hit a homer for Des Moines for Iowa for his 24th overall home run last night he hit another one he's played two games hit two homers has a total of 25 there goes a runner good throw's going to get him he is out trying to steal boy did Rick Wilkin ever throw a bullet on that and a good call by Jim Lefevre who guessed right he called the pitch out and made it easy for Rick Wilkins and stealing on Rick Wilkins these days is getting a lot tougher as he throws a strike to second base. Garcia is gunned down rather easily. And here's the jump. And Garcia cut down for only the second time this year. You know, we, uh, I think everybody felt, well, I, I guess everybody felt a little bit sorry for Paul Asamaka. You couldn't help but remember how he contributed to the division title of 89 and he's always pitched effectively especially against left hand hitters but maybe this guy Rhodes might be a lot better than we originally thought he's played two games for Iowa and he's hit two homers well there he's got 25 for the year never came close to that at any level of baseball so maybe he's getting stronger he is only 24 years old there's a bouncing ball oh what a play by Boucher Wow! One. We go into the bottom of the third. No hits, no runs, no nothing. And what a play by Bouchel to retire the, the side. Hey, Chicago, what would you do for a Bud Light? What would I do for a Bud Light? I think I'd trade a Cubs pennant. I'd stand on my head and spit. I'd trade my gender for a Bud Light. What are you, nuts? For Bud Light, I'd learn how to love country music. Bud Light! Bud Light! Everybody likes Bud Light. For Bud Light, I'd only vote once next election. I'd mow Soldier Field with a pair of tweezers. Hey! I'd deny the existence of the king. Oh, that's it, man. I'm leaving the building. If you want to save a fortune on a sports sedan, get into Buick's Special Edition Regal. At $17,999, Buick is priced it right to begin with, so it's easy to buy. And look at all you get. A 3800 V6 engine, four-wheel disc anti-lock brakes, leather, air, power everything, even remote keyless entry. Buick's hot new edition. It's powerful, it's sporty, it's a leader, and it's just $17,999. Now it's your better Buick dealer. David Hepworth exported baseball jerseys exclusively to Mexico, but now the game and his jerseys are catching on in Russia. Fortunately, AT&T's favorite nation options save him money on the two countries he calls most automatically, like Mexico and Russia, or wherever baseball catches on next. 
Favorite nation options only from AT&T. Far and away the best in the business. A participating advertiser in Cubs baseball is Dontag, publisher of Ameritech Pages Plus. Summer's here, and guess who's not getting a vacation? I came this close to going to Cancun, but no. Murphy Brown, <laughs> tonight at 6 on Channel 9. Let's pause for identification. You're watching WGN-TV Channel 9 Chicago, America's number one sports station. Harry Carey with Steve Stone and Tom Brenneman will be along at the end of this half inning. There's Vizcaino leading off. There's the strike call. Vizcaino popped up on the first pitch in the first inning. That evens it up. Two to one in favor of the Pirates. The Cubs will reach their high point in relation to the 500 mark with a victory today. They have never won four in a row this year. Two balls and a strike. He jammed him as. Slow roller, nice play. Oh, he dropped the ball. The throw, Merced, I don't think saw the ball. Carlos Garcia made a fine play, running in at top speed. And Merced didn't know where the throw was going to be. He dropped it. This goes as an error on Merced. Garcia's got the ball in plenty of time. Now he throws the ball very hard, being that close, but Merced just just misses it and that's error number seven for Orlando Merced I know what happened on this one but he hardly got a glove on it Wow! Oh, look at the nice lead by this guy you know great angle and how do you miss that there's a pitch I simple <laughs> he just proved how you miss it <laughs> one ball no strikes Look at it. Kind of. They, Garcia crossfired the first baseman. Threw him a good sinker. Throw the first runner back. Well, let's see what this guy you know at first. Ryan Sandberg, the hitter. Maybe we'll run a little bit here. Mark Grace next. Sandberg is grounded into eight double plays, and Vizcaino. Eight and eight in the stolen base department. He's got a big lead at first. Now Wagner is taking a whole lot of time in his delivery home, and that's something that they're going to have to work on in Pittsburgh. He is very slow to the plate. Sandberg, a big day yesterday. Four out of five. But outside. Two balls, no strikes. Sandberg looks at Chuck Conier coaching at third. And you can't say enough good words about Conier. He's an outstanding third base coach. Pitch foul back. Seemed like he was pulling away a little bit on that. Two balls and a strike. Grace would be next. We're in the bottom of the third. Viscano has to watch the good quick move to first because this is the hit and run situation and he is getting quite a lead. The throw over there. Two balls and the strike. Big crowd on him. Two balls and the strike. A high fly ball 
in the right field going into the stands out of play. Two balls, two strikes. Cub fans, take the entire Cubs team home with you on Wednesday, August 4th. Compliments of Kodak. Wednesday, August 4th, when the Cubs battle the Pirates, the first 15,000 fans will receive a team poster. Compliments of Kodak, the official film of the Chicago Cubs. Two to one, Pittsburgh leading. The Cubs have a runner at first, nobody out. Two and two, the count on Sandberg. Throw to first. The sun playing peekaboo with the clouds in and out, but a lovely day indeed. Two balls, two strikes. Again the throw. Again, Sandberg looking at Chuck Cotier. He wants to know if this guy, you know, is going. That's why he's looking. 2-2 Two -two pitch. There's a drive. In the center field will be caught. And Bullet. There goes Viscaino advancing after the catch. A smart base running play. And give Jose Martinez, the first base coach, who probably control whether he went or not. A good heads up base running by Viscaino. You see how many steps Bullet took before he got rid of the ball. I don't think that he believed that Viscaino was going to go. Many times on a fly ball to center, you'll see the player get halfway. That doesn't do you much good. Odds are the center fielder is going to make the catch. And Bullet does not have a particularly good arm, but more than that, he took three steps before he delivered the ball. Here now is Grace. Tying run a second. There's a drive in the right field. It's going to be caught. Dave Clark had a good jump. Hauled the drive in. It was hit very well. Here's the Aflac question. And there, Bruce Keeson. Beat the Orioles 4 to 3 on the October 13, 1971. Were you with the Orioles then? No, I was with the Giants that year, Harry, and we had defeated the Pirates nine out of 12 times during the regular season series and lost to them three out of four in the playoffs, and they went to the World Series. <laughs> Did you pitch in the playoffs? No. I didn't pitch anywhere. They decided to have the good sense to send me home early that year. Derek May can tie... Grace and Sosa for the team lead in RBIs. If he can drive the, this run home. Viscaino, a good lead at second base. Had a good cut, fouled it off. One ball, one strike. Boy, Derek May has really, really changed. He used to have trouble turning on that inside pitch, but no more. Since the All-Star break, a total of 16 games, Derek has 15 runs batted in. So he's been the most consistent of the run producers for the Cubs since the break. The 1-1 pitch. Fouled it off again. Again, he turned on the pitch. No particular wind advantage, a little... a little breeze wafting through the air. Making this an ideal afternoon. Boy, the sailboats ought to be out on Lake Michigan. One ball, two strikes. Wagner breaks his contact with the rubber. Don Slot going out to have a word with Paul Wagner. One ball, two strikes. I'm sure he'll want to remind him of a very bad pitch to Roberson with a right-hand hitter Mike Harkey do up that cost him the first run. 
He was one and two ahead of Roberson that time. This time he's one and two ahead of Derek May. He has the right hand hitter up Steve Bouchel next. And Slot wants to make sure that Derek doesn't get anything out over the plate. And when he does, he hits it hard right back up the middle. Wagner was born in Milwaukee. Lives in Germantown, Wisconsin now. Only 25 years old. Here's the runner now trying for third base as the pitch breaks into the dirt. Probably called a wild pitch. That'll be wild pitch number eight. And that's the 35th for the Pirates as a slider goes low and in. Slot cannot control it. And Don Slot last year split the catching duties with Mike Lavalier, who, as you know, is now with the Chicago White Sox. Slot now the number one pretty much everyday catcher for the Pirates. Boy, Jack McDowell became the first major league pitcher to score 17 victories as the White Sox won their sixth in a row. And the White Sox now lead Kansas City by five full games. Three balls, two strikes. Inside, he walked him. And here is Steve Bouchel. He flat out to Bullet his first time up. Well, that's not a sailboat, but the boats are out. Bouchel hitting 253. Eight homers, 35 RBI. Runners on the corners. Curve inside. Wagner has been hit for 11 home runs this year. Harkey now is allowed 10. Strike call right in there. Steve Bouchel, despite the fact that his batting average has been in the mid 200s most of the year, has been one of the better clutch hitters for the Cubs, as you saw the graphic. With runners at third base and Bouchel up, he's hitting over 400. The one one pitch. Well he had a funny swing on an inside pitch. He was just jammed on that one. Bouchel tries to check his swing but can't get the bat out of the way of the ball. So he's in a hole one and two. Rick Wilkins with two out. Will be the next hitter. One ball, two strikes, runners at first and third. Line drive, base hit, right field. The game is tied. Here's Derek May racing for third. So Bouchel drives in his 36th run of the year, looping a line drive to short right. Steve Bouchel inside outs this one and once again gets the job done with a man at third base and two outs. And these are the type of base hits that really pick up the club. So Bouchel, who was elevated to the fifth spot in the batting order yesterday by manager Jim Lefevre, responding in that fifth spot. And so that's an unearned run, of course, but we'll take it, right? Runners again at the corners. Derek May at third. Bouchel at first. Wilkins struck out his first time up. Half swing fouls it off. Wilkins. Now is fan 65 times. The leader on the team, Sosa, has struck out 
78 times. Now odds are he's going to go at Wilkins with a couple of sliders. And Wagner has a tendency to throw those in the dirt. Inside. Ball and a strike. Game tied to all. The outfield straight away. He had a good cut and he fouled it back. Wilkins hitting 295. 20 homers, 44 RBI. Wilkins has also been very good with a man at third base. And let's see if Slot goes to the slider, and Derek May has to be heads up if the pitch is low. One ball, two strikes. Inside, two and two. Wilkins looks at Chuck Cotier. Nothing to look for. Two balls, two strikes. See the ball and hit it. He did hit it, but foul. Boy, he creamed that one. But it was a foul ball. He, Wagner got the curveball up a little high and inside. How come these people on the rooftop only barbecue on Sunday? 2 2 pitch. Ball three. And Sammy Sosa would be next. And now Bouchel will be running with the pitch. Two out, nothing to wait for. Three balls, two strikes. Cubs have a chance to take the lead here. Struck him out, swinging. One run unearned, one hit, one air, two men left. Tommy be coming along in a moment. I'm going to be joining Ron Santo. Harry Carey from Rigby Field, where at the end of three, the score is tied at two.